Well, this is uh, uh, our Easter Sunday and our Resurrection Sunday. And a few weeks ago, well, probably a couple months ago now, I uh, was meeting with uh, our lead pastor, Pastor Brian, and our executive pastor, uh, and then our associate pastor, uh, Pastor Philip, and three of us were talking. And Pastor Brian said, how about this Easter, we all have the same title of our sermon. I don't know what they're preaching. They don't know what I'm preaching. But all of our campuses today, uh, our title is Rolling Stones. All right? Rolling Stones. Now, in case you're wondering, based on the title, that if this sermon is about the famous rock group, the Rolling Stones, that I'm either here to ease your mind or to disappoint you. Because it is not <laughs> about the Rolling Stones. But my task today and this morning is to, to is, uh, as we're in the Word, to discern how this story of hope and promise that happened 2,000 years ago of a life being raised from the dead is still speaking to us today. You know, it's not something old. It's not, it's not just, you know, all oh, back then. No, we live just as excitement in the resurrection as if it happened this morning. And that's the way we want to live our lives in that. And so uh, for that is what it makes, what I make, it makes a living story. It's, it's a story that brings life, a story that remains relevant now after 2,000 years. It's just as relevant as it was then. So let us consider this morning as we're looking of what makes this story so real and relevant today in 2024 as it was then. And I would imagine that as we're doing, going through these verses, these are verses that you probably have heard your whole entire life. If you've been in church, you probably have heard these stories. And, and you know, I imagine that uh, the most of us can recall a time in our lives when, uh, when we were standing in the face of something unknown. Because, see, that's what was going on then. As Jesus was in the tomb, there was a lot of unknown. There was un, unknown from the disciples. There was unknown uh, about uh, the, the, those ladies as they were going to go to uh, the garden. They were going to go to the tomb. There was just all this unknown. And, you know, we face a lot of unknowns today. Uh, and, and, and because of that, we allow stones to get rolled in front of us. And, and it can be a, a stone of hopelessness. Uh, it can be a, a stone of uncertainty. For some, it may be a, a stone of dread uh, and, and of what may be on the other side. And sometimes we don't want to maybe know what's on the other side because of that dread. When we could be missing out on something spectacular, we let those stones keep us from being all that God wants us to be and, and in celebrating all that He has accomplished for us. And it's true that sometimes the known sometimes is painful, but... but you know, the unknown is like, oh, no, you know, what, what is going to happen? And so we want to learn that the, as the stone was rolled away, that he rolled away not only just that stone for we could see in the tomb, but he also rolled away hopelessness. And he rolled away doubt. He rolled away fear. And so he doesn't want anybody to be closed off and walking around hopeless today. Because He gives us that good news and He gives us that strength. I want you to go to John chapter 20. And we're going to read some in the Gospels. Then we'll be some over in Paul's epistles uh, of looking at this miraculous uh, day and looking about what, was, what happened and what was accomplished today. But I want you to listen to these famous words. You've all have heard this probably Easter after Easter. In John chapter 20, in verse 1, it says, Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb early. And while it was still dark, and saw that the stone had been rolled from the tomb. Folks, that is the Easter message. That is the resurrection message that was relevant then and relevant today of that stone that had been rolled away. Now, they didn't roll the stone so Jesus could get out. They rolled the stone so that we could see in. To see that he was no longer there. He, he's alive. That's why I love the scriptures that said he was put in a borrowed tomb. You know, you usually don't borrow a tomb from somebody. <laughs> and so for him to have a borrowed tomb means he wasn't going to need it very long. 
and, and, he, and he overcame death, hell, and the grave, as we heard Carter say a while ago on the video. But that first day of the week, you know, today we don't, we don't go to church on Saturdays to celebrate the Sabbath. We go on the first day of the week as New Testament believers. And the reason we do that is because every Sunday we celebrate the resurrection. As we come together and worship, we worship the resurrection. And so for every believer, that's an every week occurrence. Now the whole world has set aside what we know is Easter, and we recognize that as we're doing today. But man, we can get just as excited ne next Sunday, just as we got last Sunday, because we're celebrating the resurrection. We're celebrating that the stone had been rolled away. Go over to Mark chapter 16, starting in verse 1. The Gospels each share in, in giving us the Easter story. In Mark chapter 16, it says, When the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and, and, and Solomon uh, brought spices that they might come and anoint him. So remember, when they come, there's an unknown because they're not coming to see a risen Savior. They're coming to anoint the body of Jesus. And so on their minds, as they're on their way there, uh, as they're heading there, they're, 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 their minds are on the unknown because it says, who, they said, who will roll away the stone from the door of the tomb for us? I mean, they're going to anoint the Savior and they're like, you know, we're going, but uh, we're not going to be able to roll that stone. How are we going to do this? How are we going to do that? So there was this unknown. But when they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled away. And they put this in there, for it was very large. And so it, it, it wasn't like, you know, just, you know, open the door or just move it over. This was a large stone that was placed as a barrier and, and so they're trying to figure out how they're going to do this. But when they get there, the stone is gone. And according to Matthew, it was an angel of the Lord that came and rolled away the stone. And, and I actually heard a preacher this week, and I uh, was listening to a, a sermon, and he was like, and we don't even know who moved the stone. It could have been the soldier. And I'm going, man, read the Bible. It says that the angel of the Lord moved the stone, you know. And, but, you know, I bless the hearts. Uh, Studying goes a long way sometimes. It really does, you know. And so, you know, as the angel of the Lord came and, and did this, in doing so, the fear, the unknown of those first disciples turned to freedom. Something had happened. The grief and despair gave way to a new hope. Gave way to a new hope that's even today, and it's a life that transcends even death. Amen? It transcends even death. And, and so Easter uh, means many things to us as Christians. Uh, it, it, it's, of course, uh, too big of a miracle just to be one thing. That's what I love about resurrection. It's so encompassing because Easter clearly means, of course, that Christ is risen. And He is risen indeed. But it also means that Jesus has defeated death. I mean, that was a big deal. Jesus defeated death. He said, well, uh, you know, one day my body is going to die. Yes, but if you're in Christ, your spirit is alive. Your spirit is alive forevermore. And it's because Jesus conquered that death for you. Uh, we know the scripture that, that he tells us that the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you and dwells in me. So we literally move about today with resurrection power on the inside of us. Our spirit is alive forevermore. Just as Christ could no more die now, neither can our spirit man die because it has resurrection life by the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. Folks, I don't know about you, but that gives me security. That gives me strength. That gives me peace. That gives me hope. That does away with despair. I, mean, I never go to bed and, and, and worry and, and fret about what tomorrow will bring because I'll either be alive forevermore or if, if, if this life ends and I breathe my last, I'm still going to be alive in His presence because the Bible says to be absent with, with the Lord is to, uh, is to be present with Him. And so we'll be with Him. And so that's that resurrection life. And so I can go to bed at night, lay my head on the pillow, and I don't wonder because of the stone being rolled away, that I know that he defeated. He defeated death, 
and I don't have to worry about that anymore. Easter means that the eternal, secure life is real today. It's real. If you're a believer this morning, it's real. Now, this morning, if you're here, you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. We're going to give you an opportunity to do that today. Because I want you to experience the eternal, real life today. A real life that, extend, that far exceeds the life on this earth, but takes us to eternity. And my mind can't comprehend eternity. <laughs> it's farther than I can see, but that's how far we'll be with the Lord. Go to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8 and verse 11. Paul, as he is sharing, and he writes, he says this, he says, But if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through the Spirit who dwells in you. When we begin to understand that our bodies, the moment that we place our faith and trust in Christ as our Lord and Savior, we become the habitation of the Holy Spirit. In other words, the Holy of Holies is right in here. It is in you. It is in me. You know, it's not just for the elites. It's not just for those Christians that maybe we see on TV or maybe just the ones that we, you know, see the, the miraculous things, the, the pastors of the mega churches. No. If you're a believer today, he's alive in you just as much as he is any of them. And so we need to get that in our spirits and understand that, that He has raised us up. And so just as that Spirit raised Christ from the dead to never die again, as we said, that's where we are today. But that stone being rolled away from the tomb, it, it, I love the details that's recorded in all four Gospels. And, you know, and they kind of give their own little, little twist on it. And it tells us something of, uh, about Easter that's quite significant. And that is the stone being rolled away tells us on that Easter about all the ways that God removes obstacles. He was removing obstacles. There's nothing that stands in your way that can keep you from being in a place to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Every obstacle that was there has been taken care of. Every obstacle. The veil was torn in two. That was our access. And it tore from the top to the bottom, not from the bottom to the top. God is the one who split it. He opened the way. He opened the way so there would be no obstacle for us to be able to come, the Bible says, to come boldly to the throne of grace. Boldly. I love boldly. That's not arrogantly now. We come boldly. What does that mean? Well, my parents are here today with us this week as, as they've been traveling and preaching around and have a couple weeks off and then they'll soon man coming up in april they're going to be in california boy woo, california needs jesus yeah <laughs> and so they're going to be they're going to be in california coming in april but you know when when even today even though I'm, I'm no longer living in their in their home anymore i am able to come to them boldly i come to their house boldly matter of fact i don't even knock I have access. I just open the door and come in. And when I go in, if I'm hungry, I don't go, is, can I have a morsel? Can I have just a little something? No. I go in the kitchen, I open the cabinets, and I pull out what I want. And I, and I, I don't hesitate. Why? Because I have access to come boldly into that home. Now, if I come in there, sitting on the couch, and I go, you got steak? No steak. Well, I didn't come over here for nothing. I came over here for steak. That's coming arrogantly. And then my dad would say, well, you know what? You, the same way you came in, you, you, you're welcome to go back out and, and go get you a steak. But we don't have any steak here. But no, we would be coming arrogant. So we come boldly knowing that we have the access that whatever's available to us in that home is ours because we come with that boldness. Well, that's the way when we come into the Holy of Holies with God, we come into His presence today, not with arrogance of, give me what I deserve. Give me what's mine, God. I don't ever want God to give me what I deserve. 
All I want is His grace and His mercy in, in my life. But when we come in, we can come in with boldness and access to know that what we need, all the obstacles have been removed. And so the obstacle of the stone being rolled away is significant with us because everything that needed to be accomplished was accomplished by Him, and He got rid of all those stones. So I want to invite you to think about all the stones that come up in our life. Well, even after we're saved, We'll allow stones to get rolled over in front of us. Stones of doubt, confusion, fear, sometimes guilt, sometimes shame. And, and, and we're not able to walk. The Bible says that we have been given the victory through Jesus Christ. And we miss out on the victory because we're walking around with that stone of shame, of that unknown in front of us, and we miss out on walking in victory. Because He doesn't want us to walk in victory just on the first day of the week. He wants us to walk in victory every day of the week. Every day. No matter where I'm at, that I walk in the liberty with what He has given in my life. And those obstacles that are, that are keeping us from living, and the Bible says He has given it life and He's given it to the full. That's an abundant life that's not just for the sweet by and by, but even today we can walk in that fullness of an abundant life. And He has opened that way for us. And I think about, you know, those challenges that are, that are things that are trying to keep us in our tomb, so to speak, if you want to look at it that way. It kind of keeps us locked down, that we are not able to live life. And so we understand today that when that stone was rolled away, as we said earlier, it wasn't so He could get out. It's so that we could get in and so that we could see that it's now been given us access into anything that we need with Him. Our healing, our salvation, our provision, all of that. You know, we use that word salvation, the word sozo. That's all encompassing of everything that you will need in your life as a believer. You get it the very moment you get saved. You know, it's not like one of those deals where you get saved and then, you know, he watches you for three months and, and after that trial, he'll give you a few more blessings and then, you know, he'll watch you a little bit longer and maybe after you've been in this thing about a year, he'll decide that maybe healing can be accessed by you. And, and, and so uh, unless you didn't do right and then you'll have to wait till the next year to, to kind of, you know, try to qualify again. No, all the qualifications have been taken care of. That's what grace is all about. That's what He's done for us. And, you know, the risen Lord, as He comes and enters our lives, even in the tombs of our life, He wants to roll away all those stones. Get rid of it. Don't leave here in fear today. Don't leave here in guilt today. Don't leave here in shame today. Don't leave here in the unknown today. It doesn't matter what you see on, 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 on C-SPAN and, and MSNBC and Fox News and any other news that you listen to today. You don't have to listen to that and walk around and fret and worry and fear and, and frustration. You can walk today in victory because the stone is rolled away and He is alive and He is the King of kings and He is the Lord of lords. And so I don't look to what, what the government says. I don't look to what Washington says. I look to what the Word says and that's in victory. And I want every believer to walk in that. Now, the world ought to be confused. The world ought to be in, 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 in perplexed. The world ought to be all messed up today. But you and I as the church, we know the secret because we have seen in the tomb and He's not there. Now, if you're, worship, if you're worshiping Muhammad, then you can go to the tomb and, and talk about how it used to be. But he's, he's still there. But not with Jesus. The tomb is empty. And we have seen it through the stone that is rolled away. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, starting in verse 12. Because see, what we've been given, as those stones are, are rolled away in our life of the guilt and the, and, the, and the fear and the shame and the discouragement, is now we want to proclaim to the world the good news. I mean, if somebody had a... If somebody came up with a cure today for cancer and said, this is it. I mean, we wouldn't just kind of just put it up somewhere. Especially if it's one of our loved ones that maybe was experiencing cancer in their life. We wouldn't say, ooh, I know the secret. I, know the secret. I have a pill that can get rid of that. No, man, we'd be out giving it to everybody. Well, we have something far better than a cure for cancer. 
We have the cure for sin. We have the cure for separation from God forevermore. And at last, it ought to start with our family. We ought to make sure our family hears the gospel. We ought to make sure our family knows who Jesus is. They, we, 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 we share the gospel. It is for them to receive it or not receive it, but they ought to hear the good news from us. So we've got to proclaim it. Here in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, starting verse 12, he says, Now, if Christ is preached that he has been raised from the dead, how do some among you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? Now, that was going around. As Paul was writing this, that, that Jesus wasn't really raised. Do you know there's people today that don't believe in the resurrection? Nothing new under the sun. He says, you know, if we're preaching this, that he's been raised from the dead, how do some say that he's not ra raised from the dead? He says, but if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. Makes sense. And if Christ is not risen then our preaching is empty, literally in vain. And our faith is empty. Even our faith. I mean, we'd be foolish to show up here today, celebrate something that never happened. If there's no resurrection. If there's no resurrection. And so he says our life would be empty, our preaching would be empty, our faith would be empty. Yes, and we are found False witnesses of God. We'd be false witnesses. Going around telling people that he was raised from the dead if he wasn't. We'd be false. He says, because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ whom he did not raise up. I mean, what a message. If in fact the dead did not rise. For if the dead did not rise, Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, your faith is futile. And you are still in your sins see that, that that tells me right there that when I understand the resurrection and I've placed my faith in that good news that I am no longer in my sin but I would be had he not as he shed his blood for the remission of sin had he just died for our sins it wouldn't have it would have only been a half job he had to be raised again and the Bible says he was raised for our justification. Well, that's one in big churchy words. It literally means to be made just as if I never sinned. I can't explain that one. Boy, that, that's too much for this little mind of mine to comprehend that, that when, when, when God looks at me, he doesn't see sin. He sees his son. That's what he sees. Yeah, but what, what, what if I mess up today? When he looks at me, he sees his son. And that's the victory that we have. And so we're not, our faith is not futile. We're not still in our sins. He says, he goes on to say, then also those who have fallen asleep, those who have passed away that were in Christ have perished. That means all those that, that were believers that have gone before us, that's it. This is why I won't, when I'm doing a funeral of someone who I know is a believer, I'm able to give hope. Because those who are believers, this is not the end. We're talking about eternity. This is not the end. This is not the end at all. And so, But if there's no resurrection, then those who have died in Christ have perished. He said, and if in this life only we have hope, then we're all men, most pitiful, miserable. We would have nothing to be excited about. This is why, as a believer, I don't walk around in misery. Why? Because I know what Christ has done. He has risen from the grave, and He's now alive on the inside of you and I. Go to Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3, starting in verse 7. He says, But what things were, Paul says, he says, for what things were gained to me, these I have counted loss for Christ. Boy, being, I, I, when I read that and just stop, I think about us as Americans. We, we, we have so much that we try to put on our own, you know, the gains that we get, you know, the blessings. Blessings are great. 
But he says, for what things were gained to me, he said, I count those things for loss for Christ. Yet indeed, I also count all things loss for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things. He said, and I count all that as garbage, that I may gain Christ and be found in Him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may know Him, and not only Him, the power of His resurrection. Oh, there's power in that. There's power in the resurrection. This is why I said as Christians, we come the first day of the week and we celebrate the power of the resurrection every Sunday. Matter of fact, if you really want to get real with it, we celebrate the power of resurrection every day. Every day. That takes away misery. That takes away discouragement. That takes away the doubt. That takes away the fear. When I get up in the morning and know because He lives, I can face tomorrow. Because He lives. Because He lives. He lives. I'm alive in Him. So He says, I may know Him and the power of His resurrection and the fellowship of His sufferings. Oh, we don't like that part. We fellowship with His sufferings. Does that mean we partake in sufferings too? Yeah, that's exactly what that means. Too many Christians don't want to suffer today. I'll leave that there. He says, being conformed to His death, if by any means I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Paul, he put everything on this resurrection. This is, this, I'm banking it all on that. Now, we would not have known there was a resurrection if the stone had not rolled away. People would still be showing up. We said, well, where are y'all headed? We headed over to Israel. Well, are we going to the tomb? We're going to stand there in front of it. We'll leave a little something there. To, you know how the people sometimes will do, you know? Leave a little something at the grave site, you know? Might even put one of those little lights to change colors in front of it, you know? Yeah, maybe some of y'all have seen that. I've seen them. I rode by a cemetery the other night, dark. It was glowing out all over the place, you know? So anyway, that's what we'd be doing with Jesus' tomb. We'd be coming to the tomb. We'd be laying something down there, laying a flower there. If the stone was still there, we wouldn't know. And so the stone is gone. So when I come... I don't go in there looking to see the body of Jesus. I don't go there to see who laid something at the tomb. I go there to go, see, here's the proof. He's gone. He's not here. Go to Ephesians chapter 1. You know, Paul had a lot to say about the resurrection. He had a lot to say. And I always tell you about what Paul does. Paul does the Paul Harvey. Do you know anything about Paul Harvey? Some of you younger ones don't have a clue what I'm talking about. But when we used to listen to the radio, usually sometimes, a couple of times during the day, we would get Paul Harvey, and he would tell us the rest of the story. And he would have some cool story, and sometimes they were biblical stories, sometimes they were not, but he would tell you stories, and then he would give us the rest of it. He would, he would fill in all the details of it, that we would finish listening to it, and we'd go, oh, wow. Well, this is what Paul did with the gospel from Matthew, Mark, Luke and John as they shared about the death and the resurrection of Christ we turn to Paul and he says <laughs> this is the rest of the story let me give you the inside details of the importance of him being raised from the dead and so Paul said in Ephesians 1 starting in verse 17 he says this is a prayer that he was praying over the people and we pray it over the church today. He said that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him, that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of His calling, what are the riches of the glory of His inheritance in the saints. That's you and I, folks. And what is the exceeding greatness of His power toward us who believe? According to the working of His mighty power, which He worked in Christ when He raised Him from the dead and seated Him at the right hand in heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named. 
not only in this age, but that which is to come. And He has put all things under His feet and gave Him to be the head over all things to the church, which is His body, the fullness of Him who fills all in all. Church, we need that today. We need that revelation today. We don't need the information. We need the revelation because revelation will bring transformation. And that's what we want in our lives. I don't study the Bible just to get information. I get information, but that's not why I study it. I want things revealed to me by the Holy Spirit that literally can transform my life, that can change my life. And when you read these words of, 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 that, of that He was raised from the dead and now He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And He also goes on to tell us in Ephesians that because you and I are believers today, we have already been seated with Him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You're already there if you're a believer. I, I, I can't comprehend that. I can't, I can't explain that. But you know what? I don't have to explain it. His Word says it. I believe it. That settles it. If I don't believe it, it's still settled. Whether I believe it or not, it, it's, a, it's a deal that's done. We have been seated with Christ in heavenly places. That's where He is now. And so we're seated with Him. What a, a marvelous story because of the resurrection. It's all because of that. And so the ultimate act of faith, Jesus Christ rose from the dead in order to keep His promise to be in relationship with us. That's what it's about. Each and every day that we get to walk in that fullness that the stone is gone and He ain't there. Look at Romans 8. Oh, I love Romans 8. Romans 8 so good. I'm telling you, if you've if you're if you got the blues, the blahs, and the mother grubs, and you're having a bad day or a bad week or a bad month, just go read Romans chapter 8. Because if you can read Romans chapter 8 and leave there still with the blues, the blahs, and the muddy grub, mother grubs, you need to go ahead and just get saved. So you don't have to walk there no more. Listen to what he says. Verse 35, Romans 8. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Who, 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 who's going to do that? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Any quotes from the Old Testament, as it is written, for your sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet, in all these things, say all these things, we are more than conquerors through Him who loved us. So, you are victorious today. You're more than a conqueror. Now, I always like to share what more than a conqueror is. Everybody knows what a conqueror is. You go, you battle. You win, you're a conqueror. More than a conqueror is somebody else fought, somebody else took it, and won the victory, and then gave it to you. You're now more than a conqueror. You didn't work for it. You couldn't work for it. You didn't earn it. You couldn't earn it. It's freely given by grace. For by grace are you saved through faith. Your faith in what Christ did for us puts us in this place that we are now more than conquerors through Him who loved us. Paul says, for I am persuaded. Oh, folks, if the church today could get persuaded, could get persuaded, we'd, st we, we'd quit walking around with, with those blues, the blahs, and the mother grubs. We'd quit walking around losing our ever-loving mind when something happens on the news. We, 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 when something happens in Washington, when something ha we would be fine because you say, I am persuaded that neither death or life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any created thing shall be able to to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Woo! That is the power of the resurrection. 
That is the power that we have. There is nothing, nothing, nothing. I don't care what you're being faced with today. You need to know that that stone has been rolled away. It is gone. That is our faith. When we hear that, the Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And so when we hear that today, let the Word of God produce in you faith. Because there's a lot of things that we could say would please God. Matter of fact, there's a lot of things we think that pleases God. How big our prayers are. That's pretty important. How much word that we know. Pretty important. How many times we attend church services. Pretty important. But he, he says without faith, it's impossible to please God. What he's looking for in us as believers is faith. So as we hear these words, when we see these scriptures that we're going to today, it should be producing in us faith. And faith has action behind it. Because faith doesn't sit still. Faith is an activity. And so I can move forward. I don't have to stand still. I can do what God has called me to do because I am now walking, I am now living, and I am now moving, and I am now breathing in faith of everything that He has said to us, the church. And I take it all the way back to the fact that He rolled that stone so I can see that this is real. This is real. That's our faith. That's what we celebrate today. And the only way to be a successful Christian, we can be a Christian, but the only way to be a successful Christian is to be a Christian living by faith. If you're not living by faith, you're not going to be successful. You're going to be doing this. Now, I love roller coasters. But when it comes to my spiritual walk, I am not interested in this. I'm interested in that. I don't want to be down one minute and up the next. Down one minute and up the next. Praise God. He, God supplies all my needs in the next week. I don't know. And the world goes, boy, I don't know, but I don't want to go where you go. I'm not putting my faith, because to put faith in something, that is putting my, my whole end to believing something. Well, if I have not sure, then it's hard to put faith there. And so I'm not going to be successful as a Christian. I want to be successful because I'm living by faith. And in this day and age, when all the markers of a success-driven world are on decline, even in the church, I mean, there's, there's a lot of dead churches all over the place. You know, there's some churches, I mean, they're, they're just waiting to put the dirt over the top of them. They're just waiting for the last one in the congregation. But I can tell you what, the church isn't going under, the church is going up. And so we have something to be excited about. So that's why when you come here to, to, to New Life, when you come in here during our worship time, you know, like I said, you worship however you worship. But there's people getting all excited up here. And the reason they're all excited up here is because they know that the stone has been rolled away. <laughs> and, 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 and if I can if I can get excited about my favorite college team, if if I can get excited uh, about the sale going on at JC Penney's, if I can get excited about what's going on uh, at, at, the, at the butcher shop when they have a sale on my steaks, and I get excited about that. I'm going to tell you all, when I drive up and I walk in there, and they say they a dollar off today, and I'm like, whoo, yeah. You know, if I can get excited about that, I ought to be able to supersize that when I come and celebrate with the body of Christ every Sunday. So if it bothers you that I'm excited about Jesus, just ignore me because I'm not stopping. And if you ever get persuaded, you just might do a jig for Jesus with me. You just might. You just might. Jig for Jesus. T-shirt. T-shirt time. So as we look around and we look at the church today, and, you know, the church is not, as a whole, really is not maybe walking in its fullness right now. And, and I can't do anything about the whole, but I can do for me. And I'm part of the church. And so if I begin to, to live a resurrected life by faith, 
and you begin to live a resurrected life by faith, then others begin to see in us a stone that's been rolled away. And those stones exist. They're there. And these stones are, are everything that wants to keep us from entering this deep, meaningful, true relationship of a reconciling that He has done for us. The devil don't want you to, to even in, acknowledge that. He wants to keep you covered up. He wants to leave you in doubt. God has come to remove the stones. You know, there are those that we said that don't believe in the resurrection. But see, there's proof of the resurrection. There's proof. Uh, there, there's none that is more convincing than, than to look even to the disciples. I mean, these guys were cowering in fear after his death, locked in a room, hiding out. The unknown. I always find it interesting that they didn't hear about the stone being rolled away from them seeing it themselves. It took them women. Thank God for you women. They may not have known what they were showing up to the tomb for, but at least they showed up. The disciples, the guys who spent three and a half years with him are cowering in a room, hiding out. But after the experience of the resurrection, they were no longer afraid. They, they were willing to, to do whatever it took, even for their own death. This is what happens when you get persuaded that you're willing to do whatever because now you know a secret that has now been revealed. You see, and that's what happens to you and I. You may say, Man, there's no way I can tell people about Jesus. Yeah, but when you truly experience the resurrection life, you're not, you, you can't help it. You can't help it. You've got to go tell somebody. You've got, you got to. You can't help it. They became more fearless than... than, than ever imagine I mean these guys I mean Peter who's denying him over here is literally standing there preaching before 3,000 now that's a, just another message in grace right there because I can promise you if I were the Lord Peter would not have been my guy he done denied me not once not twice but three times a lady and I just tell you Lionel Richie, sorry about that. But after the third time, I can promise you, when it came for the day of Pentecost, I'm not looking to Peter. But see, Peter had experienced now something, and that is a tomb that the stone had been rolled away, and he wasn't there anymore, and he knew things had changed. And so he became a different person. It affected Peter differently. He used Peter's gift. You know what Peter's gift was? He liked to run his mouth. And so what did he do? He let him preach to 3,000 people. Let him have people get saved. I wouldn't have done that, but that's, that's God. That's why he chooses to do things the way he does it. Those first disciples, that changed, it will change your life when you get persuaded about the resurrection. Your stones that the fear and, and I can't do will all be rolled away, and it will give you freedom. No one was more fearless than that. No stone that this world rolled in front of them could stop them now. Not even prison. You put Paul in prison, what does he do? He just starts witnessing to the guards. Threat of death. To live as Christ, to die is gain. Nothing else in this world. That's a miracle, folks. That's part of the miracle of the resurrection. You say, well, what changed? How can they go from cowering? How can they go? Because the stone was rolled away and he was now alive. There was the unknown. See, sometimes the church walks around maybe not truly convinced that he rose. Almost like we're watching a, a boxing match with 15 rounds, and we're hoping that the Savior can pull this out. I hope, I hope man, it's not looking good. No. The, the fight's already gone, and it wasn't even 15 rounds. He got thrown out of heaven like lightning. So then when he comes, then when Jesus comes, 
He gives his life. He's dead. I, I know that the, the devil probably thought, finally, and then Sunday morning came and messed up his plan. Messed him all up. And so, yeah, Easter is about the empty tomb, but it's so much more because it is about our risen Lord with, with us always. And, and, and He wants us to roll away all the obstacles. He wants to get us freed up. He wants us to keep us out of bondage. And He wants us walking in what we need to be walking in. Amen? So I'm going to tell you this morning, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Trust in the Lord. Don't doubt. Trust in the Lord. Don't worry about, don't worry about Washington, D.C. Trust in the Lord. Don't worry about whatever's happening today. Trust the Lord. Why? Because He's alive. How do I know? Because the stone's gone. The stone's rolled away. I can see in there. He ain't there no more. When we believe in that, when we place our faith and trust in the fact that He died, was buried, and rose again, it changes everything. Whatever that stone is in your life today that you put up as an obstacle, don't, don't, don't leave here with that stone today. Roll it aside. Move it aside. Walk in that victory. If you're here this morning, you don't know Jesus Christ is your Lord and your Savior. Listen, your greatest need is not money. Your greatest need is not to be healed. Your greatest need is Jesus to be your Savior. That's your greatest need. And the good news is, because of the resurrection, He's not wanting you to work to get salvation. He's not wanting you to earn salvation. As a matter of fact, you cannot. He's not wanting you to be real, real good to get salvation. There's none that's righteous. No, not one. There's none that seeks. Matter of fact, We've all heard these testimonies of people, and I know they mean well when they do it, and they share a testimony, and they get up and say, man, there was just this one day. I just decided. Nope. You didn't just decide nothing. Long before you was deciding, the Holy Spirit was already drawing. He was already drawing. You just chose to accept the call and to believe in your faith. Is what brings that salvation today. Is what brings that salvation today. And so if you're here this morning, you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You don't know Him. I got good news for you today. I got excellent news for you today. And that is salvation is available today. I want you to stand with me this morning. You're here this morning and you're... You've, You've never entered into a relationship with the Lord. You don't know that if you died today, whether you would be with the Lord. Because you don't know. I don't want anybody to leave here this morning and not know. You need to know. Know that you know that you know. Paul would often say, do you not know? It was one of his, one of his sayings. Do you not know? I want everyone in here to know. And have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your Savior. The Bible is so simple of bringing us what salvation is. It's not about coming down here to an altar. Matter of fact, you don't even have to be at church to get saved. But if you're not saved, you might as well go ahead and do it today and not wait. But it's not about walking down here. It's not about coming to me and saying, today I want to join the church. It's not what it's about. It's about right where you're standing. Right where you're standing. And right where you are today. To simply just say, Lord, I believe your word. And your word says to me that you died for my sins. Your word says to me that you were buried. And on the third day, your word says you rose again. That is the gospel gospel means good news that's the good news today and when you come to him and say lord i believe you died for me i believe that you rose again to make me just as if i'd never sinned and today i call on you as my lord and as my savior and just like that
Bible says if you'll believe in your heart and you will confess him with your mouth. Believe what? Believe that his death is burial. And the Bible says that he was raised from the dead. You will be saved. Just like that. You don't have to have a special prayer. Thank God there's no, there's no, there's no sinner's prayer in the Bible. We use that term. But there's no sinner's prayer. Not in there. It just simply says, believe. Confess. And you're saved. So there, the, the stone's been rolled away today. So all you got to do is look in and see a Savior that died for you. To see a Savior that lives so that you can live. And you say, I believe that you did that for me today. And today I confess you as my Lord and Savior. And if you do that today, then let me tell you something. You're saved. You will be with the Lord forevermore. The Bible says that you're alive today. Your spirit, man, is now made alive today. And it will put a whole different enlightening in you today. Now, I'm not going to ask you to come down here and tell me, but I would if you would like. If, if, you, if you prayed today and you believe today that He is, He is now your Savior and Lord because of your confession of faith, please let me know. Today, as you go out, say, hey, today I place my faith and trust in Christ as my Lord's there. I'd love to know that because I want to celebrate with you this morning. Because there is no better, no better day than today for salvation. Nothing like being able to tell everybody that on Resurrection Day, I was raised. I was raised to new life in Christ Jesus. And so I hope that you've done that today. Let me know. Let somebody else know. We want to celebrate with you in all that God has done in your life and my life today. And it's all because the stone has been rolled away.